Yeah. Ronald Tyson. Long time no breathe with. <laughs> I like to you know, mess it up, you know, so people start Another thinking thing. right away, yeah, you know what I mean? But I don't have to ha have you start thinking right away because you're a thinker. You know what I mean? And you have a history of, of, of thinking, a history of more than just thinking. So let me just start, uh, um, not where we left off before, a long time, a few years ago. Let me just start right now with, with this day and age. Um, in fact, you know, let me, I'm not want to dwell on this, but you said you saw Harry. I didn't see the film. I'm not, I don't want to really comment on that. But there's a lot of things happening in the popular world today. <laughs> just, just, well, just on the surface, what have you known in the in the popular world that has, has 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 struck you that says this is a little good off middle but but just 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 let me know just just start there well th th one reason why i had to see harriet quick yeah. was i'm real interested in the controversy that developed around um the sister that played harriet and mm -hmm. the way that there was a energy in uh, black pop, uh, black social media about she shouldn't play uh, Harriet uh, because of some comments that she made on Twitter and some other places that some people perceive as derogatory um, toward um, African Americans. And But see, there was another element in it that troubled me, and okay. that was the issue of, number one, whether or not uh, other members of the uh, diaspora, whether they're from Europe or Africa or else in the Caribbean or elsewhere on the planet, should uh, play roles in Hollywood films when there are African American uh, actors who possibly could play those roles. Mm -hmm. And the thing that uh, interested me about this particular, um, I won't even call it a controversy, Tempest in a Teapot, mm -hmm. was that. It had the two levels. It had the one level of her arguing, uh, having said some things on social media that were uh, perceived to be anti-African American. But the other side was uh, you know, a historical figure like Harry Tubman, someone mm -hmm. central to mm -hmm. uh, African American history mm -hmm. and African American identity, mm -hmm. uh, being played by a black Brit. And the thing that I've been working with is, let's see, Lawrence Fishburne and... Um, um, Oh, he played God. His name is escaping me. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Face. Morgan Freeman and um, uh, Terrence Howard have played Mandela. Mandela yeah. okay. You know, Jennifer Holliday played Winnie Mandela. Okay. You know, um, and how many times have we seen African American actors? Uh, Denzel Washington uh, did um, the movie, but he also did um, Hurricane the, Carter, the the, the uh, uh, Jamaican movie. Um, oh. Uh, uh, the one with. Um, Robert Townsend, and he, oh, and, and, yeah. and you know, and his accent yeah. uh, was horrid. It sounded like he didn't yeah, yeah, even yeah. attempt to get okay, any yeah. of the intonation. And okay. so nobody is going to say, "Well, uh, Denzel Washington shouldn't play a Jamaican," or you know, he played a black Brit. He made a movie that uh, 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 for Queen and Country, uh -huh. where he was a, bl uh, a black uh, British soldier that had fought in uh, you know the uh, British uh, toss up yeah, with yeah. Argentina, and uh, again, horrible accent. You know, and I've just noticed that uh, African American, that, uh, that other members of the diaspora who play Black American roles, very often play really good Black Americans. Yeah, you know, a uh, Carmody Jogo. There's a story about Carmody Jogo. Car Carmody Jogo is, um, you know, Black Brit, and uh, she was the wife in um, the most recent uh, season of uh, True Detective on each. Uh, yeah. I think it's HBO, yeah. and. Um, she played you know, Southern black woman, and she was being interviewed by an American uh, interviewer during the course of the uh, uh, show, the uh, filming and everything. Mm -hmm. And the the interviewer did not know that she was a black Brit. So yeah. she meets Carmen Jogo for the um, you know for the interview, and Car and Carmen Jogo is talking the way that she talks. Yeah. And the woman asked her, the interviewer asked her if she was studying for a role. And she said, no, this is me. I'm, I'm British and everything. And the interview was incredulous, which speaks to how well mm -hmm. Carmody Jogo was able to mask the British accent and sound at least authentically American to the extent this interview who had seen uh, the uh, the episodes of True Detective that mm -hmm. she was in had no idea that she was from Britain. And see, that speaks to a level of artistry to me that 
uh, we should be looking at, you know, is the person capable, you know, do they play the role well, do they represent, and not necessarily where they're, where, where they're from. Yeah, and then classic is it just Albert uh, doing yeah. the wire. Uh, yeah. But but listen, there's a there's a few things happening here, right? Uh, even even with with, with uh, you know Strigger Bell with, with with the True Detective thing, mm-hmm. even with with Denzel and whatever, whatever did those kind of historical figures, you know, even well not not Biko, but but a certain thing is that you know the historical figures are historical figures. There are certain historical figures. That you just can't mess with. No, give me wrong. Now, Madiba is something else because other a lot of people has played Madiba. Uh, that's a whole other weird thing because you have there's there's so many components to this. There's there's a financing how you finance a film. There's that like the classic another classic example with the uh, uh, the um, uh, who is it uh, Zoe Sandow trying to play uh, Nina oh, Simone. Oh, Nina Simone. But obviously, the producer had the money and then she but 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 you know to to do that. But she's such an icon. Mm-hmm. That for that it almost falls on not the director, not the producer. Almost falls on the actor. To say, hey, look, you know, I'm not touching this. You know what I mean? No matter what the money is. But let me let, let me go. To, you you, you name some certain things, that, but let me go to something that has to be done or that's being done right now. Uh, so so maybe you understand because this is more in your bailiwick because this has to do with the Panthers or whatever have you. They're making a film of Fred Hampton. Right. Okay. Uh, I think it's the thing is called tentatively. I think the name is called Jesus was my homeboy, and it's it, it's from the point of view of of the bodyguard, the bodyguard, the the cat that turned Fred, the, that turned Fred, that that set up Fred Hampton. Set, right, right, right. Okay. And that's the point of view. Now the thing is, Fred Hampton um, is such an icon in 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 your world. I'm gonna say you our world. I'm, okay. gonna, I'm gonna say your world only because you you we have bona fides as, as a Panther in your world. That now. You'd have to ask if the, the actor playing who's going to be uh, the, supposed to be a Brit, um, uh, the guy that did uh, Get Out, you know. Right. Um, now, now the thing is, he has to do his research. As an actor, he has to do his research. That means he has to talk to certain people. You know what I mean? He has to talk hey, to certain people. Hey, Mr. Sebastian, Mr. Yeah, 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 Daniel Kluge. Right. Um, he has to do his research. So first you have to look at him as an actor. Get Out, all right, no no problem. Mm-hmm. I wasn't impressed with his Black Panther work. He did a film called uh, uh, called Widows. I was not impressed right. at all I'll because that, Widows, yeah. when I saw Widows, for me, he was he was actually imitating Tin, Tin, uh, uh, Tin Roth doing a uh, lie to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to say an actor. I'm, I'm, I'm no, I understand. I've seen it. I've seen it. He was an actor. He was imitating an actor doing, right. a, 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 you know what I mean? So for me, he's not a great actor. But that's not the, that doesn't say he can't do the role necessarily. But my question then, if you're going to research this role, you have to talk to certain people. Who is going to let you in talking about Fred Hampton? You, you understand? Right. Me? Does he know somebody in that world? I mean, whoever he knows in the world, who is he talking to in that world? And what are they saying? You know? So that's going to influence the thing. Of course, you have the other, the director. Da, 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 da. So there's a whole lot of things going on with finance. Who who uh, who gets promoted? Because then what happens if you're going to make a film about Fred Hampton? When you go out on that circuit promoting the film, they're going to ask you about Fred Hampton. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you don't know enough about Fred Hampton, or if you don't know, or you start misleading people, you know it's going to be a disaster. You see what I'm saying? Not unfortunately, not not fortunate, but but it's not a lot of people around with, with for, for Harriet Tubman. But however, you know, people know there's certain things that that's you know if if that um, I like I didn't see the film, so I'm not going to comment on the film exactly. Okay. But it was stated by the by the director wherever have you that uh, they want to make a film for accessible to basically young people. Right. So nice thing you got to clean certain things up and blah 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 blah. Right. blah. So 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 it's going to be a fictionalized thing. I want to stop here, but I want to to point out something. Of course, I want to stay with Fred Hampton because okay. this is going to be important to me, to me personally, you know, and it should be important to you. And that is this: uh, the, the, there's a film that came out, uh, uh, Joker, you know, it's okay. a car- cartoon uh, character, right. no cartoon character now. Uh, 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 and the, what happens? The actor playing Joker, a cartoon character, uh, who, who has a, has a history in cartoons and a history in cinema, talked to the director, and they were so close to trying to what they wanted to portray. What they wanted to do, not necessarily with the with the character and with the, with the, the world that the character lived in, that you can see on the screen that these guys really work. They really they spend time. They just in the creative process, whatever have you. The question is, that's going to be the same thing, you know, mm-hmm. with where you know with 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 Fred Hampton movie. Does this person have the bona fides to handle this? 
This is the qu- let me ask you that question. Uh, you no, know, because this is, he's closer to you. I don't. <clears throat> I don't know whether um, Daniel. Uh, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong. Kaluga. 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 Daniel. Kaluga. Daniel um, is going to. I saw him get out. I've seen uh, most of what he's done that's been uh, uh, shown in uh, American uh, uh, movies and everything. And I don't know. Um, to me, it doesn't make that much of a difference who represents uh, Fred Hampton as much as how Fred Hampton is represented and what purpose it serves. Um, see, there's a lot of mythology built around Fred Hampton. I met him once. Mm. There's a lot of um, mythology uh, built up around him. Uh, and that's all fine and good because we need icons. Uh, I'm concerned about how do the issues get represented. You know, at the time that, um, that Fred Hampton, I, 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 just as an aside, you know, I was shocked to find out that um, I was relieved to find out that Fred Hampton was older than I was at the time. You know, <laughs> which is young. Me, you know, and, and, and that's that's pure vanity. But uh, when I met him, I met him in the summer of um, of uh, 1968, uh, the same year that he was uh, killed in December 68, and. Uh, he was sitting outside. I came up to the Harlem office of the Panthers on Second Avenue. It was it was the summer, so it was it was, it was you know a, a warm a warm month, a hot month. And mm-hmm. we used to have a bench out in front of the office and everything. Mm-hmm. The people sat, and I walked outside. I came up to the office, and he was sitting on the bench outside. And I knew who he was. I seen his picture in the paper, mm-hmm. in the Panther newspaper, and everything. Um, uh, you know, Chicago, the corrupt cops, uh, murderous cops, mm-hmm. corrupt city. Um, uh, government, uh, African Americans outside of the you know segregated mm-hmm. and everything you know horribly residentially segregated, horribly you know, educationally segregated, um, locked out of any meaningful positions in uh, city government, and this is the context in which you know, the Panthers developed in uh, mm-hmm. Chicago when the Panther Party came to Chicago, and this is what you know brought up you know someone like Fred Hampton, and I'd hate to see a movie that sort of plays on the iconography and the image and the legend and the mythology and doesn't deal with the issues that brought him and those brothers and sisters about they brought up they brought out somebody like Bobby Rush. Mm. See, because if the issues are the things that are put forward and foregrounded and you get a half a halfway mediocre performance by the actor, to me, that makes it worth it. But you can have a stellar performance, totally alienated from any of the social, political issues, from any kind of context whatsoever, you know, that just sort of focuses around the individual. And to me, that's a wasted project. See, I'm one of the contrarians about what Spike Lee did with Malcolm X. Mm. Okay, um, I and because a lot of the issues that brought about a Malcolm X and made the Nation of Islam so popular in New York, you know, in the 50s and 60s and everything. I grew up with guys that joined the nation in the 60s. Um, mm-hmm. I grew up with guys that joined the nation after the assassination of Malcolm X. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, Spike's movie didn't do that for me. Mm-hmm. Now, for a generation that had no knowledge of Malcolm X, or for a generation that was alive when he was alive, but had no knowledge of Malcolm X, or saw him as a hater, or saw him as, uh, you know, was you know was a black fascist, you know, as some people called him. Mm, you know, mm, um, mm. I can understand the, the importance of the movie, but for me, the, it, the movie just didn't do it. Yeah, but see, this is the point. This is the point. In fact, this is a good. I don't want to jump to, to, but let me just do my real, 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 real quick. And you know this for sure. There, for me, there are there are at least. Uh, well, we'll do. We'll leave Malcolm a little alone. Let's just talk. There's at least two Malcolm X's. Yeah. There's, there's there's Malcolm X, who is the uh, spokesperson, spokesperson for the Nation of Islam, spokesperson, the mouthpiece for Elijah Muhammad. Right. That's a that's the Malcolm X that most people know. Then there's that Malcolm X after the after the break with the Muslims until and, and, and until his death. 
let's say the last year of his life, right. which is a totally different Malcolm X. So now he's speaking for himself. He even says, I'm speaking for myself right. now. So most, so you're going to have a problem with that anyway. There's no, there's no way, no way around that. You see, there's, 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 there's basically two Malcolms. Malcolm is speaking for a, a group of people that, that he's developing, you know, the, the newspapers, the, the businesses, the, 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 you know, the whole, the whole thing. And then the Malcolm that, that, that say, okay, now I got to start a whole new thing. And now I'm actually separating religion from politics and oh, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have problems with that, too. You know, you, you know let me just say, you know, I, I, I mentioned you know, the last the first time we spoke mm -hmm. that one of the things that turned me around and I'm going to relate this back to what you were saying about Malcolm X, that, that you know, uh, hanging out with the Fanny Shakur after having known her in uh, the, the Panthers and everything, me running into her uh, by accident at Wells Waffle House a couple of years later and hanging out for a little while. You're too, you're uh, talk about, about, you said, said about it's Snoopy. It's you know, what happens is finding out, you know, that she was into peanuts and Snoopy and me mm -hmm. thinking that was incongruous, but then, you know, maturing and coming to understand that, mm -hmm. you know, that we have this way of a society teaches us to think about the idea of the human, uh, human psychology, human ideology, our consciousness is supposed to be this integrated whole, and that there's something wrong if we have things about in our personality or in the way that we see the world or in the things that we do that on the surface seem to be contradictory. You know, see, and it's folks who can't see the transition and can't see that Malcolm can have or anyone can have five or six or seven or ten seemingly contrary and contradictory impulses all embodied in the same body and that that's the person and it's not it's not necessarily a contradiction it's not necessarily incongruous um you know and so what happens is because we can't see that what we'll do is we'll focus on this part of the person and not that part of the person see and it manifests itself in all kinds of ways it manifests itself to the point that i was telling my students just last week i was telling them about ted bundy and mm -hmm. i was saying that the thing that allowed ted bundy you know to continue to do what he was doing even when he was a suspect by the police of being a uh, you know a, a serial killer of women was that people couldn't get past the presentation of him as the okay. clean cut okay. guy, and they saw you know murderer and you know an abuser of women you know and all of that and this seen is, as contradictory. This is why we have to deal with the popular perceptions. The popular sure. perceptions are sh is shaped by you know, by films mostly these days. Yeah, sure. But also, I mean, I can I can make the case that hey, Malcolm, I can make a whole play. I can make a whole thing on just Malcolm being a comedian. Right. I'm right. just, just a comedian. And people say, what are, you, what are you talking? I can do a whole thing on Malcolm the comedian. I can do a whole movie on a comedian. You just show a comedian. What we say, oh, that's a, that guy's a comedian. You know, mm -hmm. there's this whole thing. I interviewed a professor who ran with Stephen Biko. And he said something that I don't, it's never been brought out. I think it's never been brought out. that Stephen Biko had a laugh. And he would actually laugh at his waters. They would, they would drive them crazy. He had this big laugh and he would just basically he was to me it would look like he, he everything was absurd to him so he had a, he, he was laughing at the absurdity of, of of the of the of the situation of of the situation of these people trying to that, that aren't human you know they're trying to do they, they don't understand they're in a human situation and they're trying to be inhuman in a human situation so we laugh at them you know, well, you know let me just say something real quick you know um when manny marable you know put out and it's ironic mm -hmm. the Marin manny marable passed Three days before his book came out, it was bizarre. Manny Marable passed, uh, and his and his book on Malcolm X came out. Uh, you know, okay. he passed on a Friday, I think it was, and the book came out on a, two, a Monday or Tuesday. So he never got you know uh, any feedback from sort of popular perception of the book. But when he speculated about uh, Malcolm having hustled, um, you know, this uh, this wealthy gay man, white gay man in Boston, you know, the reaction was. Anybody I'd say just blown out of proportion, but go ahead. Blown out of proportion, but, but you know the the idea that well, you know, uh, that, 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 that this could possibly have been, been Malcolm. Well, first of all, why not? But second of all, if you understood the way in which sex acts between men in prison are packaged and presented and imagined, then you can understand how. The idea of saying, well, if someone has a, um, you know, if, if, if a man, you know, who we believe is heterosexual has a relationship with a man that makes him homosexual, then the person who understands human nature would say something like that. See, and it gets back to the thing I was saying about how we see people as, we see it as contradictory 
or problematic when people represent show fragmented parts of the self of the consciousness. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a, into a little bit of this and I'm into a little bit of that. Well, that's contradictory. No, that's who you are. Well, no, not so, no, no, I got to argue with this a little bit because sometimes, some, some, a lot of times, sex is a weapon or certain things are weapons or certain things are, uh, for a partic- particular situation using certain things of a si- situation to either get in or get out of a right. situation exactly so i don't I, exactly you, I, you have to look well i have to look at not only a person's deeds but i have to look at their projections their, their, sure. uh, has their projections if, if 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 even in your projection if you if, if you uh, deviate over here okay fine that, that, it's like you meandered for a second but you still what's your projection you know what I, mean? I call it actually your through line what's your through line your through line starts very from 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 the beginning you know what i mean i i consider my through line as as, as a lab technician i said what the heck are you talking about I, I, that's what I slept. Everything I've done is like a lab technician, which almost which feeds into me being a stage manager. So everything I do is as a stage. When I look at the world, I look at the world as a stage manager. When I do anything, I look at it as a stage manager. But the essence of that is a lab technician. When I'm always looking at the book <laughs> and seeing, then say, "What well, does this formula work? Doesn't work. This is the situation I have. This is what I have to work with." Da 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 da. Now a lot of people, because they're informed differently. They they're, they're going to work differently. You know what I mean? If you if you know, like I said, if you're, if you're informed, there's an an actor is the worst thing to be informed of because these <laughs> I, as a stage manager, I can tell you, actors they're the worst people to be spokespersons or or icons or anything like that because a lot of them are running away from certain things. A lot of them have definite more more. We're all damaged, but they're more damaged than most of us. That kind of thing. So you don't even know who you're talking to at a particular point. You know, when, when you talk to actors. But see, if you put like energy that. in them, That's I believe because we know because America. And I think one of the things I don't believe in American exceptional, exception, exceptionalism. I believe that one that of the things that almost that if there's anything unique about America. It is the fact that we have developed a bizarre kind of nobility and royalty, and that is athletes and entertainers are our nobility and royalty. You know, we invest a whole lot of energy into, uh, you know, I don't think anybody in Britain would ask Beckham, you know, what he thought about Brexit. Uh, you know, they got other people uh, to yeah, ask yeah. that. You exactly. see, is that they would exactly. boy want to know, people want to know, how do you bend the ball? Okay, yeah. you ask Beckham. You yeah. don't ask Beckham anything about Brexit. This but one. we, you know, we will ask uh, Michael Jordan who he's going to vote for. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? But see, oh, we, I, you know, but, but see, we idealize it. And so it's, it, you know, it's, it's not even the actor. I mean, you know, Michael Jordan's going to be Michael Jordan, you know, and Denzel is going to be Denzel. It's us. They put energy in them, and then it's they want to make decisions based on well, who Denzel is going to vote for, or what movie Denzel likes, right. you know, uh, or yeah. whether he takes sugar in his coffee. Who cares? Yeah, actually, yeah you're absolutely right. But this is other this is other <laughs> thing that I uh, uh, it's this whole see America is great at packaging. I'm going to give you two, uh, one example exactly because now they said men magazines are going down. People are not looking at men magazines anymore. But if you remember when Playboy, I'm saying because we are of the Playboy <laughs> right, generation, right, right. but Playboy was nothing was nothing but a, a smut magazine that had a glossy cover, right? And some really profound interviews and articles. Right. But everything else, if you take away that stuff, it was just a regular old 40s, 50s, well, I say 40s, 50s uh, girly magazine right. showing breasts. Right. That's all, and you just got marketed slicker, da 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 da. And right. then because, and then taking off from there, you got these clubs, and you had that, 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 that. But in essence, it was it was what it was. It was, you know, it was, what it, was yeah. it, it was just that that America had a way of re, of packaging in such a way so it mm-hmm. becomes so. But now it's not just America, but now it's the whole world looks at this kind of thing, and therein lies the problem. Uh, um, as you as you may or may know, I, I live in South Africa, and I want to get to this point. I need I need to stop this point because I want to talk specifically about South Africa for for a second, uh, for for a bit, but. Uh, a kid came to me and he, he, he wanted to be looking at his, his report. He was doing something like, it was on, it was on uh, uh, I think entrepreneurship, something like that. So he named something like, named something like, um, oh, what's that guy? Bill Gates, um, the, uh, the Amazon guy, and somebody else, all these computer, uh, 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 oh, the, uh, the Apple guy, like that. Mm-hmm. And so I look at his South African. I said, look, I said, look, I see what you got here. I, I understand that. But I said, well, where is, the billionaire that invented from India. Where is the billionaire invented from Brazil? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Where is it? I'm, not, I'm, I'm gonna leave South Africa out for a second. But you have a name. There's got to be somebody in India, right? You know, that's just right. that that has more money than 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 than, than your you know 
and you're Bill he Gates, so or, well, yeah. or you're you know, the, the, the Apple guy, whatever have you. Yeah. And he was, you should, you should have saw his face. It was almost like I crushed him. Oh, yeah. It was the only way he was coming to me as an American to, yeah. to, to uh, or something to, to justify his, his picking these kind of things. And I'm, I'm trying to say, in, uh, and, and I remember I talked to uh, uh, an author one time, Leonard Schlein. He did wrote this book on women or something like that. And he said he was next book he was going to do was on Leonardo da Vinci because you know he could do things with both his hands or something like you know whatever he's. Just yeah, yeah. What was, what was, what was, what was the other guy? One of those guys like that. That's so I said. Wait a second. How do you know? At the same time that he was doing that, there wasn't some guy in the mountains of Peru doing the same thing. You know. The point is, if you got the printing press, if you got the American media, if you got the, you know, if you got the, if you got Hollywood, right. you know what I mean. Right. Then you got the minds. Right. What's, the, what's that? The, the, the Vietnam thing. The hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. And therein lies, I think that's therein lies our problems. No, that's it. You know, go in, you know, like, go back, let me just take it back to Harriet for a minute. You know, um, there's a scene in Harriet where um, after she, um, after the Fugitive Slave Law is passed, um, I'm not, I'm not going to do any spoilers, um, you know, after the Fugitive Slave Law is passed where she's uh, talking to a group of um, abolitionists, you know, um, so, somewhere in the, the Northeast, I think it was New York State, and um, they were trying to figure out what they were going to do about uh, the uh, fugitive slave law, whether or not they were going to um, ag agitate for, uh, you know, for uh, escaped slaves to stay and fight and their supporters to stay and fight or whether they would have moved toward a mad exodus, a mass exodus out of states that used to uh, that were formerly uh, some relatively safe zones like Pennsylvania or New York. And that's that's a myth in of itself. But and move everybody to you know Canada. And everything you know, out of uh, you know because the slave catchers could cross you know into Pennsylvania or New York or Massachusetts wherever you know and um, you know and uh, force the return of a uh, escaped slave. And Harry Tubman confronts the room and even Frederick Douglass, you know, and sort of says that uh, you folks have either uh, and she's talking to a group of blacks and whites. So the the assumption is the whites are all abolitionists, but and the majority of the blacks are either freeborn, you know, or maybe themselves escaped slaves. She talks about how they have grown comfortable. They're so removed from slavery that they've grown comfortable, you know. And Frederick Douglass is in the room, and so there's been a, some folks have pushed back about uh, the uh, representation, you know, the counter opposing of Tubman against uh, Douglas, mm -hmm. you know, and other, you know, and other folks like that in the film. And uh, what it is, it's a movie and it's going to celebrate Harry Tubman. It's going to build, you know, it, it's not even a biography. It's a, I can't pronounce the word, but it's, um, uh, Hey, Gian, I've never learned how to pronounce that word. Um, the, the, when you build, it, it's H-A-G-I-O, um, hey, hey, geography. It's when you build yeah, myth, you know, around yeah. a person. You're not trying to do this point for point, right. you know, factually, historically right. accurate picture. You know, it's like what uh, Parson Weems did for um, George Washington. You know, the first American uh, yeah. biography was George Washington. And Parson Weems wasn't concerned with truth. He was concerned with creating legend and myth. So he's the origin of the uh, apple tree, you know, uh, story about chopping down the, che uh, sorry, the cherry tree, chopping yeah, yeah. down the cherry tree. You know, that's the origin of that story. Um, and so that's what, you know, that's what the movie is. What happens is we believe the myth and we believe the legend. And then we just get disappointed when the history doesn't correspond to the mythology as opposed to the other way around of being more invested in the history. So you're not saying we're, we're, not, we're, we're not researchers, we're, we're, yeah. we're consumers. We, we're okay. consumers. We, you know, we, we, you know, we take our news, we take our uh, our sense of history from from uh, you, you know from the movies and everything. Well, this is this is interesting. I've I've, I've come up with another label for myself. I, I hold on to this one. I consider myself the, the archivist of the autochthony. <laughs> I'm an archivist <laughs> for the autochthony. You know. Now this is important. This is very important because if you wanted to find out something. Well, let's go to Harriet. About Harriet Tubman, who, who, where would you look? You have to look in some some stuff that, that that white people wrote, or some newspaper articles, or whatever have you. That was filtered through something, da da da, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Because uh, we, we, there's no, maybe there might be some slave narratives that we haven't found out yet that right. that, 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 that mention her, whatever have you. Um, so, so 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 150 years ago, you know, uh, 100 years ago, uh, you have to go through certain things, right? But right now, in this day and age, somebody like me, a bunch of other people, if I'm talking to you, nobody knows who you are. 
I'm not, I'm not saying you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. But now when they want to go to, to research about what you said about Fred Hamm, whatever you say, you know what I mean? They can almost look at this particular thing that we're talking real. You know what I mean? There's a lot that we're not, we're not encumbered by uh, 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 a white editor or any, any other gatekeepers, mm-hmm. you know, like that. So when people 100 years, 150 years from now want to research this era or, or research about whatever we're, we're talking about, they have more sources that are not influenced or, or not gatekeeped, or uh, you know, by uh, uh, by 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 forces that that might not have us in in their, in their interest, or see themselves through uh, I won't say rose colored glasses, but a, a different kind of frame. You, you understand what I'm trying to trying yeah. to get at? So it's important, I, I I think, for people like you to talk. I mean, really talk seriously about you know about what 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 you feel should should be because. Again, when you're talking about when she's talking to this room full of white, whatever, these all these movements from that time, era, they were heavily in, influenced by white people. And I'm gonna say, sure. well, I don't want to see white people like that. I want to say like a white mentality. Yeah. Now it could be a, a guilt mentality. It could be a pure. It could be a John Brown mentality. It doesn't matter. But it's still mentality that's informed by wherever their you know whether their concerns are. And the same thing for all the organizations that I know of. From the NAACP all the way up, up with the exclusion, even 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 the Marcus Garvey uh, 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 people influenced by by whites, you know, if you want to say that. I, I guess the Nation of Islam wasn't influenced by whites like that, but there's still a, a mentality, a white mentality that they're strained through that. Through, 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 well, I just uh, say, well, well, I, I got to say that this about that. Um, why the Asiatic black man? Mm. Why not the Sub-Saharan African black That's man, right. or the African black man. Why the, you know, why the uh, uh, the de-emphasis on facial hair? Why the, uh, you know, the uh, dislike for uh, black women's natural hair and everything? You know, why the preference for, you know, why being caught up in the whole issue of, you know, you know, of you know, Mike Bright and one bus stop, bus stop from white is preferable to. Um, you know, to dark skin. Uh, I see. I saw that in the Nation of Islam in the sixties and seventies. Truth be told, I saw that all over the place in the sixties. And I saw that in the cultural nationalist movement. You know, and I'm not finger pointing anybody. Uh, I'm not blaming anybody, and I'm not trying to better than anybody. I'm simply pointing out that that those images and those ideas about beauty, those ideas about what's good and bad, those ideas about so many things are so deeply ingrained in all of American society that it we have to be careful. But at the same time, it's okay because it's who we are. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hey, going back to this popular media or popular images, remember, I don't know how long it took before Ebony Magazine, or Ebony, as we say in the ghetto, Ebony Magazine, <laughs> to finally put a natural hair oh, yeah. style oh, sure. on the cover. Oh, however, 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 Jet Magazine, same publication mm-hmm. people, had it way before. Sure. Way before. Well, see, they came to different audiences, though. I, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. They came to different audiences. Who are we talking to? This yeah. is the problem. Yeah. This is the big problem. When, when the, In this day and age, uh, um, the, the thing that got, I don't want, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place now, I don't really want to do this, but the thing that got Bill Cosby in trouble was not the women, whatever, have it, because he made a speech, this, this famous pound cake speech. Yeah. But he's like 40 years, what, how many years removed from the, the circumstances of the people that he's talking about. Right, exactly. And he had no, it, 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 and he didn't research enough to understand, I mean, there's no way there's no way you, you know, I, I assume you're in your you're in your seventies now, that get, 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 can actually know what a thirty year old is really going through. Mm-hmm. There's just no way. I'm sorry, you know, you can read all the things you want, you can talk to as many <laughs> as you want, but even if you know a thirty year old in in, in in New York or, or in New Jersey or in Chicago, that doesn't mean you know that thirty year old that, that that's in that's in in, 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 in in Augusta, Georgia, right now, or, or even. Uh, see, well, see, let me just say, see, for me, and, and you and I have. Uh, May, may well disagree about this, but see, for me, it's the, that's the instance where we sort of forget and, de- and, and and forget how important class is because you know because middle, see middle classes are middle class. Mm. You know, you'd be amazed at how middle classes think alike, act alike, mm. have the same goals, dreams, aspirations. You know, and uh, you know a lot of the same kind of views. And so, what happens is somebody could be. Uh, 
uh, down. And then what happens is they get the money, they get the job, they get the home, they get the whatever. I'm not saying this is destiny. I'm saying that what happens is in the, you know, in the norm, in the general progression that the thing will take place, what happens is, you know, you start caring about your lawn, you start caring about your money, you start caring about uh, the schools in a different way. And what happens is, you know, uh, let me say this, you know, uh, uh, Charles Chestnut, uh, when Charles Chestnut wrote uh, uh, The Mao Tradition, Mao Tradition was published in maybe 1900 and 1901, uh, it's, uh, there's a, uh, uh, a, a black doctor in North Carolina. And what happens is he's um, on his way back from uh, a conference in New England. And so when the train crosses the Mason Dixon line, of course, he's forced into the colored car. Mm. So what happens is um, he's with a white doctor and uh, the white doctor sort of says, well, he's with me. And the conductor says, I don't care. He's got to go into the colored car. So the white doctor says, I'll go into the colored car with him. And the conductor says, you can't do that. Okay. So what happens is, uh, you know, so the doctor goes into the uh, the colored car, you know, uh, the segregated Jim Crow car. And then there's a, uh, and then the narrative, the novel goes into his head and everything, the way that the doctor's thinking, you know. And he says, you know, that what, that why doesn't the, train line and the train company understand that I have as much objection being sitting with sort of the common people. And then there's a scene what happens if the train makes a stop and all of these, I don't know whether there's a tenant, you know, farmers or, uh, you know, or sharecroppers, but they're obviously manual laborers, they're argu arguably manual uh, 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 agricultural laborers, get on the train. They're dirty, they're smelly, they got like, you know, chickens in the cage mm -hmm. and they're eating, you know, and dropping food in the aisles of the, of the train and everything. And, you know, this, this black doctor's forced there. And so he says... Why doesn't the uh, train company understand that I object to be in group with these people the same way that a white man or woman of my class objects to being grouped with those people? Now, we can say anything about we want to about the author, about Charles Chestnut, but those attitudes exist in 2019. Mm -hmm. You see, so I'm going to tell argue that that's what that is, you know, that, uh, you know, the Cosby and any number of other folks, you know, middle classes are middle classes, you know, and, you know, and there's that interesting interplay that's always been in this country between, you know, class and race, you know, such that, you know, for many black folks, the acquisition of things becomes that which we believe entitles us to all of the rights and privileges, you know, of whites, because if you take away race, then the thing that seems to separate us is things. And so mm -hmm. if I have as many things as they do, why am I not seen as, um, you know, it, it, you know, as an equal? And so then we may think that we are and we may demand the privileges and then get all messed up in the head where the society says, well, no, because. Yeah. OK, yeah. you may think that it's things. I don't care about your car or your home or any of the, or, you know, or your bank account. I got you. Well, Professor Ronald Tyson, I want to thank you for this. Let's close this part one. I need to talk okay, about okay. something very specific. I want to stop here because it's, okay. you've been very enlightening so far. I think so. Okay. <laughs>